Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. It's a very exciting day here at Wheelie Good TV's HQ. Yes, I've just been sent the first ever thing I've received through my channel free of charge. The very kind people at Insta360 have just sent me this beautiful little bundle. And before we all get far too carried away with this excitement, I know what you're thinking. Here is an unboxing video. No, it's not, because I absolutely hate unboxing videos. So what we do have is the Insta 361X2 camera with a micro SD card. Uh, there's a selfie stick. It's a new version of a selfie stick, a lot lighter, even though it's the same length. The motorcycle mount bundle, which comes with the handlebar attachment, a ball clamp type of affair, and every single accessory and sticker you could wish for. The lens cap, which you do need. I'll come on to that in a moment. Uh, either get the lens cap or the lens guards, because you don't want to scrape those lenses. The audio adapter, again, I'll come on to that, and the larger helmet mount. I'm very interested to use this, because this will save me putting the traditional selfie stick down the back of my jacket sticking up in the air by about two foot and one last thing just before we kick off and i've told the lovely people at insta360 the same is that even though i've received this package my opinions and my views of the camera and indeed even the accessories which came with it will be my own i owe it to you folk for following me that i will be as truthful as honest and as transparent as i possibly can be and that will be the way i will continue so moving swiftly on from that fabulous unboxing video we have here three of the different style of mounts which came in the bundle so we have the helmet mount as you can see i've already mounted pre-mounted that because it should really be stuck on four or five hours before you go for a spin but make sure it's nice and solid and secure because obviously i don't have to tell you what will happen especially when the wind catches that camera and obviously tighten everything up very tight as well and then we have the camera itself on the, I have to say, much thinner, but same length selfie stick. So therefore it'll cause less wind drag, so it should be a lot easier to use when you're on the motorbike. Um, the camera itself is on the end there with the lens guard on. I would recommend definitely buying for €25 Euro the lens guard covers. And indeed this little slip-on thing comes free of charge with the um, actual camera motorbike kit. As you can see in the side there I also have the audio adapter. Just in case any of you didn't know I've been a television cameraman for 30 years now so I know a thing or two about cameras. In fact I probably know a little bit too much because I'm very finicky and very particular when it comes to picture quality, audio quality and I'm of course always striving to get the best possible angles from on board a bike here. So we'll start with the handlebar mount. What I do like about the ball mount is that these are made of rubber rather than the older versions which were metal and they forever slipped. So they feel a lot more solid. So the idea of the camera being mounted here is obviously as a shot looking back at me and also a shot looking at the dashboard. And I'll best remove that first of all because the shots looking forward would just have that cable in. And of course with all these 360 cameras you just keep the camera locked in one position and you can select any shot you want from, well, 360 degrees afterwards in the software. Perhaps my favourite shot of all, it's the camera on the selfie stick sat underneath me backside. Don't know if you can see the camera on the end of the stick there. Obviously make sure it doesn't stick out too far. I uh, only use this device when I'm on. There's our Rottweiler, come to see. Hiya, Lexi. How are you, darling? <laughs> you come to see? Come to see it's me, not an intruder. It's all right, it's just me. So, I'm frightened now. She looks the part. So, uh, like I said, make sure it doesn't stick out too far. I only use this on very wide country roads where I know there's no other traffic coming towards me for obvious reasons. And again, you can reverse it. Again, stop the bike, of course, before you do this. <laughs> and stick it out the other side, and then you get both angles. I'll do all of this on the test. So there we go, place the camera on there and I'll get a, a nice tight fix. Now bear in mind with, I'll just take the lens guard off first. With the audio adapter in, that little flap there I'm sure will pop into shot. So for this particular shot, I'm going to remove the audio adapter especially if it's looking back at me. The stitching between the two lenses happens obviously between the two lenses, so try not to have the line which would be directly facing you because 
One thing I've noticed about the previous camera is that when it's stitching the two lenses together, there is a, a, a tiny line. It's quite difficult to see. It's actually much better on scenery far away. But when it's close up and that line between the two lenses goes down in front of you, you can definitely see the blur. So rather than having the line here looking straight towards me, turn, the, turn one lens towards you. And in fact, turn that side towards you because when you power it up, then you can see the screen as well. It's one touch start stop recording, as you can see like that. Just takes a, a second to fire up. And it's actually recording already. Okay, so I'm gonna go out for a spin now and test all of these camera angles. It's a bit tight with the beam here, but we'll fold that up. There we go, that will fit into my jacket pocket lovely. And with the helmet here as well, what I'm going to do, rather than detaching this from the top of the helmet, I'm just going to fold it back. That should be all right. Okay, onwards. So the first thing I'll say is that the camera is in fully automatic mode here. It's straight out of the box. I am going to do another video very soon about all the manual settings within the camera, of which there are plenty. I've had a quick scroll through. You can even shoot in log mode, which means you can colour grade all of the footage afterwards and uh, just can't wait to start testing all of that. But yeah, straight out of the box. And I have to say, looking at this, the colours are very vibrant, very rich. They don't look too dark and they certainly don't look too saturated so overall very impressed with the color so as you can see it's very standard 360 shot of me and then we can turn it around again without touching the camera at all you can do all of this in the software afterwards and don't be frightened or daunted by the software because once you get the hang of it indeed i already have released a video if you check my video list on my channel you'll see there's a video there which i released fairly recently about how to basically get a shot out of this camera and into your final edit. And from the same camera position, although a slight admission here, I did bend the camera mount in a little bit just to get a more head-on shot of the cockpit display. Uh, just to show you again what you can do from, well, nearly the same camera position. I did touch it this time, however. I love this angle from the 360 camera rather than using a traditional action camera looking back at ourselves and let's face it if you're motor vlogging on YouTube we all love to have this angle since it's us doing the talking but you just have so much more flexibility using a 360 camera so that's one box ticked and here is the side shot with me sitting on the selfie stick and the camera sticking out obviously to my left hand side Again, to reiterate, the software in this camera makes the stick invisible. And again, looking forward, all done in the software. You can see the helmet mount up there as well, bent back on my helmet. This is a great angle to get a sense of the road. And indeed, it always makes the shot look faster than what you're actually doing. Just be careful you don't stick the camera out too far because you don't want to catch the hedgerows. It looks though as though it's sticking out a lot further than it actually is. I'm doing all of this in the edit afterwards, moving the camera around. I just love this angle so much. You can play with this until your heart's content. See what I mean? <laughs> Look behind you as well. And this is all from the one camera position. You can see the back wheel bouncing up and down there. So. Let's take a, a closer look at that in the software so we can zoom in. If you're talking about the suspension on your motorbike, you can just do something like this. There you go, see the wheel bouncing up and down. You really do have 360 shots from one camera position. Funny that. And last but not least, I'm going to test the new helmet mount. Very excited about this. As I used to, as I've already said, is stick the selfie stick down inside my jacket, protrude about two foot in the air with the camera on the end of it. Um, now, not to mention the danger of doing that, so I'm delighted that there is another option. And this looks just as good as the selfie stick. Although the taller you are with the selfie stick, i.e. the further away from your helmet, the less the picture will be curved. You see, it's quite curved here. Now, the 
The mysterious black dot following me in the air is actually the USB-C cover on the side of the camera. And as I flagged at the beginning of the video, I was worried about that coming into shot. So I'll have to consider maybe cutting that off, even though it'll make the camera non-waterproof. But I'm not planning to submerse the camera in water anytime soon. But this is a, such an amazing shot. It does look like there's a drone hovering above you. You see the thumb screw on the top of my helmet there? That's directly under the camera, by the way, not on top of the helmet. And again, I'll just look at options of mounting, camera, mounting the camera the other way around. But this is such an impressive shot. It's such a grey day here in Ireland as well. And once again, going back to the colour science of the camera, it is a huge improvement on the previous model, the Insta360 ONE X. So whatever wizardry they've done inside the camera, you can still use this on a grey day now. Previously, with the other camera, I wouldn't have even considered using this footage, but this, in my eyes, is extremely acceptable. One of my favourite angles, this. And just to reiterate, uh, of course the world is your oyster when you have something like this, because you can play with so many different camera angles. These are very basic angles, actually. Um, but I'm only just putting this video together just to show you what the bundle comes with, what the new camera is like, and just to give you a few ideas of where you can start mounting this on your motorbike. I can't wait to start playing with different angles myself. One of my other favourite angles, in fact, and nearly all my favourite angles, is to have the selfie stick sticking out the front of the motorbike. Um, I use two Manfrotto clamps, one mounted into the other. Uh, you can see that on a previous video I've made. I'd rather not use this uh, new ball clamp mount because I think the selfie stick and the camera sticking about, well, 125 centimetres out on a ball clamp mount, it would just come in for a lot of bending movement and it would put too much pressure on the actual clamp itself. I don't think the clamp was made for that, so I'll stick to the two Manfrotto clamps. Summing up, what do I think of this camera? Honest opinion is I'm hugely impressed. Huge improvement over the previous version. As I said earlier, I would never have considered using this camera in my broadcast television world, but I'll even consider taking this out in my camera bag for work now. So that's uh, probably one of the strongest things I can say about it. The battery life is a massive improvement on the old one. I've only been out doing these few shots for the last hour and uh, just got home and there's still 70% of battery. That's another big huge plus. Again, I'm going to release lots more videos of this camera and the setup in the very near future, including audio. Audio is one of the key elements which gets overlooked in so many vloggers' videos, especially when you're on a motorbike. One thing I've never quite mastered is recording very good, clean sound of the engine of my bikes. So I intend to put the, this camera actually to test now that it has the audio input on the side of it. My plan is to put a little lapel mic hidden somewhere, possibly under the tail tidy or something like that, and feed it into the camera whilst it's on the back of the bike. So I'll be doing all of those tests, and indeed I'll be looking into the possibility of using this camera, replacing my GoPro on my chin mount of the helmet, and just using this one camera to do everything which would make life so much easier when you're on board a motorcycle. So all of that to come, very excited by this new camera and the accessories which have come with it. I'm certainly going to be out playing with this very, very soon. Thanks once again, folks, for watching. I hope you've been able to learn a thing or two from this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do, because hopefully you'll learn a lot more. Thanks again. I'm Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV, over and out.